Um, so far, my experience at this workshop has been mind-blowing. I never thought that I would actually be working, uh, building something. Um, and um, my dream has always been to build my own house. So now I'm, I now have the skills to do that. And um, uh, I'm on my way. Um, all the modules are so important. They all lead to, um, you know, to, to the skill, all the skills that we need to work with bamboo. So it's hard to say which one is most important. They're all important, but which one I most enjoy is the uh, building part, the construction, working with my hands, working with the actual bamboo and seeing it uh, being lifted and put into place. So it's still uh, falling in love with bamboo, which is not as simple as it seems because it's actually falling in love with nature, with the environment, with using the resources around us, with conserving what God gives us. It's falling in love with indigenous people. Well, it's falling in love with creation. Welcome to the first Bamboo Bootcamp webinar. My name is Rika. I'm with the Bamboo Bootcamp. I have my team here, uh, Bam Sarmiento, Oscar Sarmiento, January Tune, and our three bamboo experts. So I hope you guys um, will learn a lot today. I hope, I know that you, you have a lot of questions. You've been asking us on our fan page. We're hoping that our three experts will be able to um, answer most, some at least, of your questions. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker for this afternoon, Sir May Ray Milan. Um, he's been a bamboo on for 30 years. Uh, he's one, definitely one of my mentors here in Davao. So we are currently filming this from Davao. I'm from Davao. Um, most of our speakers are all over the Philippines. We can't wait to hear your feedback. So don't hesitate to ask any questions at the end of the three speakers. We will have a Q&A section since um, and our admins are watching our Facebook Live. If you have any questions, just type it in. Um, they're going to be uh, getting an opportunity to ask directly to, uh, to get answered by our experts. So, Suri, welcome. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm okay. Okay. So, um, sir, I know you prepared for us a video. We're going to try to, we're going to show that now and then maybe you want to introduce your video um, if that's okay with you yes uh a warm afternoon to everyone i, I would normally ask anybody who, who ask me about bamboo to come and visit my farm the reason for that is so they can see the real thing and so that i i i will they can show me that they do not have only a passing interest I am making today an exception because uh, of the pandemic and and because I believe that the bamboo camp people, uh, who, uh, what they do will help me uh, uh, share my bamboo gospel. I am a 74-year-old veteran bamboo planter and I have six grandchildren plus one coming. That gives me every reason to continue my advocacy for the environment. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm so happy that you gave us a, an opportunity to show your video. So um, we'll, uh, we'll find you again later for our q and if that's okay with you. All right. Jan, we're ready to roll Sir Ray's video. 
It is a wonderful day to be talking about bamboo. I am the proud owner of a bamboo farm. In my bamboo farm, there is no less than 30,000 mature bamboo plants. This is not natural growth. This is not a miracle of nature. It is the product of more than three decades of patience, perseverance, hard work, a deeply rooted love for the environment, and a lot of prayers for sunshine and rain. I planted my first bamboo on November 25, 1985. I have been a bamboo farmer for 36 years. This project was started upon the inspiration of a wise old man whom everybody calls Daddy Taasi. He is long gone now, but the lessons he taught on sustainability, environmental regeneration, and livelihood generation are long remembered. Advocacy for the environment and livelihood was not always a popular thing to go to do. Hardly anybody ever listened to us. But day by day, week by week, month on month, and through the years, we stubbornly pursued our crusade. Tanim, tanim, tanim lang ng tanim. Early on, we observed the value and the demonstration effect of creating something that would demonstrate what would or should be done and can be done. Therefore, we developed this farm. There were no books to read, no model farms to visit, no Facebook, Google, YouTube, or Messenger to learn from. There was nothing to copy and replicate. We depended on our wits, and we learned the hard way by doing. We committed all the mistakes in propagation, planting, culture and maintenance, harvesting, drying, and treatment. These mistakes became the foundation of our gradual improvement and mastery. Now, we have become very good mentors. We are the bamboo people. I cannot proceed without mentioning Dr. Felizardo Virtusio, an eminent researcher and bamboo scientist. He visited us in Tagum City in 1987 and he opened our eyes to a wider perspective on the benefits and potentials of bamboo. We fast forward now to the situation today. The outlook for bamboo is brighter. There is a heightened interest in bamboo as a replacement species for reforestation and as a new material to replace the dwindling supply of timber for the construction industry and other basic products to replace plastic and metals. Bamboo is the new tree of life. Dati, di ito pinapansin. Dati, di ito pinapag-usapan. Pero ngayon, nauso na. Sumama na ang mga bambito at mga bambita sa mga plantito at plantita. Paramihan na ng variety, paramihan na ng koleksyon. Now there is easy access to information about bamboo. There is an amazing advance on the technology for the processing of bamboo into construction materials 
textiles, food products, and a whole list of other useful products needed in our daily lives. There are wonders of wonders in bamboo architecture. There is no shortage of experts and would-be experts. They are all on social media, bombarding us with information and selling seedlings and other bamboo products. I must also mention the sudden multiplication of our friends, the Facebook farmers. But everyone has a contribution to make if only to get more attention for the bamboo industry. Even government has joined the Banway God. DNR announced that they would cause the planting of 16,000 hectares for 2020 alone. I wonder where these are planted. The Mindanao Development Authority launched its own bamboo program by calling a summit. I have yet to hear of their master plan, their targets, and their schedules. DTI has announced that 22 billion will be allocated to support the bamboo industry. I hope it reaches the lowly bamboo farmer. Tesla has completed its bamboo training protocols. I hope to participate in the rollout. By the way, their protocols on plantation development were validated in my farm. We are fortunate that there are champions who are with us. We have the likes of Ed Manda, who is working tirelessly on government financial support and policy reform. Architect Jeb Michael de Guzman is aggressively making available the technology for industrial application of bamboo. My respect to Father Vic Davao of Kabilin Bamboo Cebu, who unselfishly shares his new varieties. My salute to Mirna Disipulo of Bukidon, a veteran bamboo scientist who refuses to retire. She was my early mentor. My thanks to Professor Emer Borromeo of Los Baños, who introduced me to Guadua. Of course, we recognize all the chat rooms where there is unlimited information and sharing of experience. In sum, <clears throat> we welcome all these developments. My consolation as a senior advocate is to finally see a robust bamboo industry emerging. It is inspiring to see many young professionals getting involved. A warm welcome to all of the new bambuangs. Sana na wiswis palagi ang ating mga kawayan. Happy bambuin! Thank you, Sir Ray. I'm so happy with your talk. Um, hopefully, one day we're all invited to visit your farm in Tarum. So once everybody is open to travel, I'm sure they would love to see your 30,000 bamboo trees, you know, thriving and um, harvesting. Um, I'm going to move on to the next speaker. Um, I'm so honored to introduce one of our um, mentors in Bamboo Bootcamp. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome Sir Ed Manda. He's been um, advocating propagation of bamboo for the last 15 years through the Philippine Bamboo Foundation. Um, Sir Ed, I think you don't need an introduction. I. I'm happy that you're, you call, you've answered our invitation, and we hope to see you in Davao soon. Me too. 
<laughs> so, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to share, uh, as you said, Rika, the 15-year experience of my immersion in bamboo. I uh, started in 2005, and then knowing all the dynamics within the small industry, uh, I will share through our uh, PowerPoint uh, some tips. And I hope those who want to go into bamboo business will take some of you of the tips that I will be sharing so that you will do it uh, correctly and meaning not to, to uh, for you to save money. Okay, I will share my, my screen right now. And uh, let me see. Okay, can you see it now? Sir. Okay, can you see it now? Is it? Okay, yeah. so we'll start with this. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the last portion of the presentation. <laughs> I'll start with the. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So now that the term essential is also. I use the term essential bamboo. Okay, in the Philippines, as you know, we have plenty, very abundant uh, unmanaged bamboo clumps uh, in practically in all the provinces in, in the Philippines. The problem is uh, it's unmanaged, it's not unproductive, and it's being depleted at a very uh, fast rate. The one that you see on the... Uh, on the uh, our point is a Kawaiian tinik. Uh, this is uh, the number one. Uh, that is according to uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Bertuccio. That is very abundant in the Philippines. So that's the reason why we want to have these uh, clubs uh, become very productive for farmers in the provinces to make money out of it. In terms of ecological importance, this one hectare, of bamboo plantation sequesters carbon dioxide by about 62 tons of carbon, uh, carbon dioxide a year. So most of this, uh, I, I'll, I'll uh, enumerate uh, the ones that uh, we have uh, in abundance. As you know, the Kawaiian Tinik. Then you have the giant bamboo, which is very good in Mindanao. Then you have the bolo. Then you have the killing. This is good for uh, pulp and paper. This is the biog for uh, biomass. Okay. As uh, our mentor and coach uh, Ray say, the bamboo is the next timber. I would say the timber of the 21st century. On the left side is the one process in China. This is used by the process is uh, through the hydraulic press. On the right side of the screen is the one being processed or produced in Pangasinan in CS Green. This is a floorboard factory. So, source of food. Uh, this is the bamboo shoot. The world trade is now one billion US dollars. One billion. We can catch up if we want to do this. It's a good and excellent agroforestry commodity. Uh, this is a specific example of what we had in La Union. A source of biodegradable material, biofuel, charcoal products, as you can see, these are the commercial uses. Oh, this is the one, the bamboo household products. Disposable, biodegradable. Disposable plates, cutlery, and cutting board. Mga gumawa ng mga curves, no? Na naiiba-iba. So, um... Okay. The Bamboo Business Enterprise Development. Okay. Ito yung mga tips, no? Kailangan, you know, the full utilization of resources. Uh, you have to have muna a technology-based planning, uh, development, uh, yung skills training, just like what Rika is doing. Ito yun. Now, yung startup, for those who want to go into business, so startup bubble enterprise, could be sole proprietorship, cooperative, corporate setup, 
And then you have to have a basic understanding of bamboo's characteristics as raw material. And then you have to do this, uh, basic skills training. Meron po tayong ano, bamboo production. Pwede nyo i-download sa TESDA web website. You can do this. And then what is important is the availability of bamboo in your business location. Kung walang, walang raw material, walang negosyo. Ito yun. Ito yung medyo kailangan maipaliwanag ng mabuti. Yung skills development, importante yung sa ating kawayanan na katulad nito, yung nakikita nyo sa, sa, sa picture, ito yung uh, prevalent in most of the areas that we have been to. Hindi inaalagaan, hindi marunong, natatakot pasukin yung kawayan because matinik. Ito yung basic-basic training because if you know this... Uh, stages ng, uh, ng uh, cleaning, you can do anything and, and the other species like bayog, kiling, or even giant bamboo. You should start with the basics. No? Kasi dito po kinukuha yung inyong planting materials and you can harvest the mature, mature bamboo. Pwede ibenta. Now, look at this. This is what's happening in most of our areas. Ito yon before rehabilitation, after rehabilitation. Lalo na pagka yung uh, rainy season, maganda ang tubo ng inyong bamboo shoot. Ito yun, yung community nursery. Importante po yung community nursery. This is one of the areas na importante matutunan because you, you can produce your own planting materials. Uh, people commonly call it as uh, bamboo seedlings. Eh, wala namang seed yung bamboo. So, ano yan, tawag natin dyan uh, propagules. No? Yan ang mga priority species. Marami na banggit ni Coach uh, Ray, kawain tinik, uh, itong giant bamboo, and others. So, yung marami yung nakikita sa probinsya. And recently, marami tayong mga collectors ng guadwa. Guadua is a, they call it the iron bamboo, which is very uh, popular in Latin America, specifically in Colombia. Uh, this is one of the pilot plantations that we're developing in La Union. We started with this uh, giant bamboo, um, medyo five years old lang to coach, kung makikita mo doon sa picture. So, the character of giant bamboo, pagdating po sa low elevation, hindi siya malaking-malaki ang diameter. That is what we observe. Pagdating sa higher elevation, lumalaki talaga siya. Well, these are the uh, community-based uh, industry. Ito yung domestic market po. No? Yung pulp and paper. At uh, the... The species, bamboo species, that they need is kawayan killing. Ito po ang ini, uh, ginagamit sa pulp and paper. For example, in Brazil, they have 25,000 hectares for kawayan killing only. Just for pulp and paper. And I heard, yung ating mga scientists na nagpunta doon <laughs> sa Brazil. This one, sa biomass for energy, ito yung ginagamit nila ngayon. Uh, sa boiler, sa uh, generation ng energy. And look at this, for the local uh, consumption alone, ito yung order po eh, 720 metric tons a day. So you have to uh, harvest 23 hectares daily. This is the demand. This is the market. Bamboo pole, CS Green. Yung ating big manufacturing uh, facility in Pangasinan requires 30,000 poles a month. We are still looking for uh, people who can supply this on a regular basis. School desk. This is a 250 million budget by DepEd to purchase this uh, bamboo desk, uh, which is in accordance with Executive Order 789. Nobody is yet to uh, develop and sustain the supply of this particular bamboo desk to depot. Lack of raw materials again. Now, recently, instead of um, using still the rebar 
of uh, the houses now being used is bamboo poles. Yung pong, yung pangkaranyo pong ginagamit po dito ay kawayan tinik. Ayan. Ang final po dito ay yung tinatawag nating base bahay. Ito yung recent development. Sa bamboo fiber, ito po yung additional income na pwede. A two-year-old uh, kawayan tinik, napakadami po palang fiber ito. Uh, this was uh, discovered by uh, DOST. Uh, the uh, person in, front, in the right side with me is Director uh, Celia Elumba of the Philippine uh, Textile Research Institute of the OST. Another source of income, bamboo fiber. Uh, this is the proof of concept of our CSR. For those who are interested in CSR, ito po yun, instead of tree planting, nag bamboo planting. Uh, this is based in Makati, the Insular Foundation. Uh, we had a tripartite agreement with the LGU. Uh, the Philippine Bamboo Foundation and the Insular Life, Insular Foundation. This is the area that uh, we assigned to them. This is a river back stabilization using bamboo. Uh, these are the voluntary employees. So July 2019, that's two years. Two month old and then update. Hindi pa namin update to, pero after 15 months, you see? If you have quality planting material, you will have quality uh, bamboo plantation. This is the Lubao Bamboo Park that, uh, the, that was developed with the help of ERDB at first. Then we came in after two or three years. We are now helping them improve and develop further the area. Uh, they are adding 20 hectares more. Oh, this is a cover of the Rotary magazine. And they asked me to do a cover for the environment project of Rotary. Uh, this is a shot of the uh, river bank stabilization in Lubao. Lahat po yung nakikita nyo ay kawayan tinik. This is what we found out. Sa brackish water, pwede pong mag-survive ang kawayan. Provided, i meron kayong mangrove muna, mag-layering muna kayo, and then the second layer at saka kayo magtanim ng kawayan. Tumutubo po siya. This is another project in uh, Demo Farm in Baguio. This is for the high elevation uh, bamboo species. No? This is the decorus, they call it decorus. This is bamboo ornamental. Oh, these are all ornamentals uh, in high elevation. Most of these on the left side are Philostachys aurea. Okay. It became a uh, tourist destination in Baguio. We just closed it recently because of the pandemic. Source of planting materials. For those who want to go into farming, you don't have to buy. You can produce your own uh, planting materials. If you are in Dabao, go to Coach Ray Millian. He will, they, he will teach you how. So commercial nurseries, meron, but you can do it yourself. Your uh, production of planting materials. No? We call it seedlings. Uh, these are the sources of ref reference materials on bamboo. Marami na po ito ngayon. Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau. May mga website po ito mga to, no? Uh, Regional Offices of DNR, Forest Products Research and Development Institute of DOST, the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, or PICARD of DOST, and of course, the Beijing-based INBAR. <clears throat> they have a good uh, website, no? dami po nyo matututunan dyan. Uh, ito pong mga listahan na itong binibigay ko sa inyo, ito po lahat nasa social media. So you can ask lots and lots of questions from them. Ang hindi lang nakalagay dito, nalimutan, ay si architect, <laughs> Jed, at saka si Christian. So besides Mindanao, si Father Big, of course si 
si Ray, Milian, Robert, Francis, and si Mir na disipulo. On the left side, sa Luzon side, ito yung mga, basically, these are the uh, bureaucrats of the uh, uh, DNR based in UPLB. The others, like Patima, is based in Baguio. Um, and she is good in ornamentals, no? ornamental bamboo. The two, Bernard Bowing and Tyson Stanky, are the registered uh, licensed foresters so are trained on bamboo. Si Burkhardt Kinney is now involved in a tissue culture. Tissue culture, of course, our Philippine Bamboo Foundation. You can take a screenshot of this so that you will not forget the names of uh, who you want to deal with and ask questions in the social media. Uh, these are some of our projects uh, in progress. Lubao is one. Well, of course, this is CS Green, the manufacturing plant in Pangasinan. This is in Bayambang. This is Baguio, of course. This is in Pugo, La Union. Pugo, La Union. This one is in Terra Verde. This is in Maringondon. Soon to have a bamboo ano, boot camp, I think. And they're planning one soon. Uh, this is our material, the reference material, if, if you want to get it. And this is our contact numbers. We have our Facebook. and bambuhay to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, Ed, for your time. And I hope that um, more people will be encouraged to plant more bamboo. Um, like you said, uh, there are a lot of projects that are up and coming, like the desks and, and the base builds. And it hasn't been delivered because of the shortage in raw materials. Yeah, and yeah. Um, this is the reason why we're heavily promoting propagation um, of bamboo. So we'll move on to our next speaker, my good friend, um, one of our bamboo bootcamp um, uh, resource uh, speakers, um, architect Jed, welcome. I yes, yes. <laughs> uh, all the way from ano, all the way from Bataan. So, ano, away from the ano, from the ECQ. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for ano for inviting me to talk uh, in behalf of uh, Bamboo Boot Camp. Um, okay. Uh, just say ano, a a primer. I'll be showing uh, items coming in on the technical side. Uh, so, kung si Sir Ray, uh, for 30 years bamboo ano bamboo farming tapos si sir ed on the ano on 15 years of ano of bamboo experience here uh, we ako naman i'm representing the millennials uh, on the technical side being an art practicing architect and um, uh, doing bamboo ano bamboo structures and also uh, coming in influence also from bamboo university uh, bali indonesia through green ano green school uh, elora hardy and orin hardy's team uh, in uh, in care of their father John Hardy in uh, Green Village Valley. Okay, so without further ado, so I'll be sharing my screen. <laughs> okay, so here, so uh, are the uh, no, are the slides uh, okay? Okay, so uh, sila Sir Ray and Sir uh, sila Sir uh, Sir Ray and sila Sir Ed are are uh, no, are doing the propagation. Uh, on our side from Bamboo Bootcamp, we are also doing the propagation. Um, we are teaching our, uh, no, our students or our participants to plant the bamboo, be, uh, be, in, uh, be in touch with bamboo, uh, because not all bamboo can be used for, uh, no, for structural applications for construction. Okay. So uh, just, just one basic uh, life, cycle, life cycle of bamboo. It starts with the shoot. Then after one year, it grows at full length with maximum diameter then on the ano on the second year to the third year it starts the branching so at ano at first 
at the first year it's full height full ano full uh full dimension uh being it uh, pumping water during the rainy season then on the ano on the fourth year it grew it grows inside and uh, hindi po pare parehas ang gamit with the age ng bamboo so if you see here at 30 days it's uh it's good for consumption for human food mga ano po natin um uh, sa ano uh, sariwang ano sariwang kawayan uh, bamboo shoots it can even be trained into ano into square ano sections at 6 months to 1 year pinakita ni sir ed from before it can be done into woven, woven into baskets woven into panels and even woven into cloths and even uh, for for roofing sa sa uh, flattened bamboo at two years, it's good for ano, it's good for doing splits and other ano, uh, furniture applications. Because medyo malambot pa siya. However, if you're venturing into construction, we need four to six year old um, poles, uh, whereby it's much stronger. Okay. Uh, just a quick discussion on you know, on the technical side of a bamboo. Uh, here we are seeing a clumping bamboo. Clumping meaning all the all the rhizome system is bunched up into one area. So here you have the mother ano mother pole, tapos nanganak na po siya. So if you see here and going to this portion, yan po yung anak niya. This is the mother. This is yung ano yung kanyang ano uh, direct offspring. And this direct direct offspring uh, grows shoots. If you see here, meron siyang apat hanggang lima. Actually five ano. Five shoots coming in from ano from that side, kaya kaya ano uh, yearly you can produce as many poles as ano uh, depending on the productivity of ano of uh, each pole, and this whole ano rhizome system is actually the trunk of the bamboo, while the poles that you're seeing the green ones is actually the branch of the bamboo. So how do we know the age of this ano of the poles if uh, coming in from the previous uh, pre previous slide, we are doing six months, one year, two years, and three years. So for construction, uh, again, reiterate, we, we do it for four to six year old. So the most scientific way of identifying the age of bamboo is one, coming in from the main pole or the main cong, we identify the first generational branching, though, so that's one year. And from this generational branching, it branches out. So we have two year old, then from that two year two year generational branching we go again so that's the that's a three year old uh, bamboo clump a uh, second most effective way is of course looking at uh it's uh, the white portion here it's a combination of fungi and algae uh we call it the lichen um it determines the age of bamboo yearly kumakita nyo po this one meron pa po siyang calm sheet halos wala pa siyang uh lichen parang manipis pa but here, din nagpapatong patong po ang lichen. So the the ano the more layers of lichen, the ano the higher the age of the bamboo. Okay. Uh, I just like to reiterate when it comes to ano to forest uh, application for bamboo. So we we know na bamboo first at foremost is shallow rooted. In the na root stratification and forest layers. So ano ba ang components of a ano if a natural forest? Unang una po, we have the forest floor where you have shrubs and herb, ano, herbaceous uh, plants. Then, uh, dito po, yung roots, root system niya may be about a foot. So, you have grass, rice, corn, fruit crops uh, that can grow on the, ano, on the forest floor. Or, ano, or somewhere na kaya without, the, ano, without sun. Okay. Then, going out to the understory layer, you have... Uh, Cassava, pineapple, banana, papaya, dragon fruit that can be grown maybe two to three years going in uh, through, through, the, ano, through the assisted regeneration. Afterwards, you have a canopy layer, medyo matataas po siya. This can be coconut, bamboo, palm, coffee, pepper, and cinnamon. And of course, ultimately, uh, we have the emergent layer for the rainforest. So this is where large fruit trees, farm timber, pterocarps, and hardwood. So, in essence, if you have yung bamboo natin, yung root, root system niya, it's shallow, but then you can train it up with other, ano, with other uh, species or other, ano, other layers para yung kanyang ugat malalim. And hindi lang yung surface ng, ano, surface ng soil na protection and through the bamboo, pati yung deep, ano, deep portion of the, 
of the soil mapaprotection and through different ano so on our end we are not uh, promoting monoculture yeah in ano, in bamboo so here a diagram here so you have a bamboo pens uh, so, so you have your bamboo here that can ano, that can withstand the wind together with ano, with timbers and tree tapos you have fruit trees and nitrogen fixing uh, areas and uh, this same ano same system energizes the ano the water plume natin okay and uh, when seeing it in ano in a diagram so there you have your native forest you have intensively managed bamboo uh, less intensively managed bamboo and agroforestry and other and ano so this makes a component so kung gagawa po tayo ng ano ng kawayan uh, uh, forest, uh, kawayan forest or a bamboo forest we we want to diversify yung ano natin. Papano yun kasi, uh, first and foremost, we need products uh, throughout the end of, uh, throughout the year. For example, for January, say you, you have, ano, you have your corn. Then for, for say, summer time, uh, you, you have your, ano, your dragon fruit. Then come ng, ano, ng November, December, after the rainy season, that's when you can harvest the bamboo or even get shoots, uh, bamboo shoots uh, all throughout the year. And of course, uh, other fruit trees depending on season. So yung income coming in from for the farmers, uh, it cannot be purely bamboo unless it's ano, it's uh, in, intended. So it's going to be under the intensively managed bamboo. Okay. And uh, here we are also talking about, uh, we first talk about root stratification and diversification now we are saying uh, shelter belt so kung meron kang bahay here on that side um, there's a you know, there's a there's a method of protecting yung pan, ating open field be it an open field or even kahit mga bahay into ano uh, by stratifying bamboo trees and shrub in order to break yung wind so meron kang maliit na portion uh, for the shrubs then a tree Tapos merong kang big buffers uh, before the bamboo or even the bamboo itself uh, doing your fire retardant shelter belt. So ito, ginagawa natin to, to break the wind. Kasi uh, meron tayong mga instances na yung uh, giant bamboo uh, natutumba ng storms dahil sa lakas ng hangin. So there are some, ano, some here are some uh, from Miyawaki uh, manual. If you are intending to plant a fruit forest, ang requirement natin is around 50% of species should be fruit bearing. And this same, ano, same order can be done with bamboo. So on the top portion, this is a bamboo ma managed agriculturally. Pero in the wild, uh, the, the, ano, the, the spread is medyo irregular. Here you have a ano, inten intended uh, planting in, ano, from the Hilayan, Manolo Portich. So this is around maybe uh, 10 to 15 year old. So I think planted. So this is around 12 year old uh, clump. Maraming marami na siya. And also uh, when we, we are doing the, ano, the plantation, there's different spacing for different species. So for the dendrocalamus species, around 8 to 12 meters. Gigantocloa is around 6 to 10 meters. Bambusa, particularly yung tinik, is around 4 to 6 meter spacing. Then uh, trisostakis, um, these are yung mga small diameter, mga anos, mga ginagamit natin for bamboo straws is around 3 to 5 meters yung na spacing natin. Uh, doing this, uh, may space tayo, 8 to 12 meters. In between, you can even intercrop other ano, other beneficial uh, crops. Okay. Para hindi ka lang lahat nakabank on bamboo. Uh, some numbers that, ano, that can be seen. So for every one hectare, if you're looking at this, uh, we are saying it's 100% bamboos. For a 100% bamboo forest at around one hectare, uh, at 10 by 10 spacing, you can get 100, ano, 100, ano, 100 clumps. At 8 meter by 8 meter spacing, it's around uh, 156 clumps. At 5 by 5 meter spacing, you can get 400 clumps. So in essence, this also translates na per clump, Assuming na it's ano na ready mature na 36 poles na yung ano yung clump natin, uh, we can get six poles per each clump of 36. Okay, so this six poles translate multiplying natin tungo ano natin uh, 100 clumps times six, we can get 600 poles per uh, 10 by 10 
uh, spacing at one hectare. So and so on so forth. So pag five by five, you can have two thousand four hundred poles. In construction, how does it translate? Uh, if you want to construct a ano, simple structure, ang ano nam is five poles per square meter. If we want medyo uh, complicated structures, we do an eight to ten uh, poles per square meter. Um, well, I'll skip this. Ano, I'll skip this slide. So uh, bamboo plantations can be done intercrop, properly mulched, and also kapag nagugro siya inaalagaan. What we want to see is not a monocrop culture, but a ano, diverse uh, uh, forest that can regenerate and has different uh, byproducts and fruit products through agroforestry, through symphodial ano, and uh, syntropic farming and other organic uh, techniques. Okay, so now, kapag ikaw meron ka ng supply ng kawayan, through uh, resilient bamboo forestry, you need to treat it. And here, uh, the most basic of this is really, number one, in order to you know, to treat a bamboo against attacks from insects, uh, you need to remove the food store food source of the insects, which is actually the starch and sugar contents. There are a myriad of ways of uh, doing it. Uh, mainly, it may, can be soaked, pwedeng, uh, through pressure. It can be through heat, or even through natural and transpiration methods. Um, it varies per ano per per treatment method and depends on which area and what type of bamboo that you want okay so here are some pictures lang of the treatment facility in you know, in indonesia um we use uh, borax and boric acid for treatment because it's you know it's a natural boron salts okay but uh, of course uh, chemicals can be vary depending on the you know on the style uh, smoking can also be done uh, widely used in japan so they have the nicene after you know after a treatment uh, also transpiration method uh, being practiced pressure method so here uh, pinupush yung ano yung starch and sugar so that uh, tutulo siya on the other end through a ano a pump okay tapos yung tigas niya is only the ano tire tire uh, pressure around 30 psi lang design process so once na may ano ka na treated kawayan ka na of course we want to utilize it uh, through the construction side uh, we use first the first ano, first mover is actually a uh, construction model. So once we have the construction model uh, through bamboo sticks, we plug it in on the 3D, you know, 3D model. Tapos this 3D model, we analyze it through the structural engineer inputting the properties of the, you know, of the bamboo. So that, uh, yeah, uh, we input the ano uh, tensile strength, compressive strength, uh, cone thickness in order to do the calculations. And once we have the calculations, that's the time na pag uusapan natin yung jointing and you know, other areas. And also, uh, here in the Philippines, uh, Bamboo Boot Camp does uh, trainings and workshop in order for construction. Uh, and uh, we do it through a Bayanian style. Once we teach them, within four days, uh, kailangan magawa na yung frame. Tapos after nine days, ganyan na siya. And once we leave, Hopefully by 45 days, uh, na build na siya. This one is done in Dumiag Sambanga del Sur, a 21 meter long bridge with 14 meter above water. Uh, for scale, and jan yung ano, yung bike. Okay. And also recently in uh, in Dupuda Davao, we did a you know a a workshop, uh, inputting uh, around four furnitures and also a you know a structure 12 meter high. Yeah. Uh, some ano, some works in progress uh, after the uh, workshop so once na umalis sila uh, pinagpapatuloy po natin yung ano yung work so here this one is in uh, Damilag Manolo for teach book in noon yeah so one uh, we prefer teaching craftsmen laborers uh, entrepreneurs and anyone interested in you know, in doing bamboo we visit treatment facilities during the course of the workshop and of course again it made me stick model tayo. It translates into a structure that we natin within the four days. So, yeah. all right. Okay. So that's it. Uh, just a quick primer for ano, on the technical side for bamboo. Thanks, Jed. Um, that was very quick and very informative. But everybody that's watching now, their heads are all spinning. 
So <laughs> they're actually asking if they can get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So, um, for those that are asking to be emailed the PowerPoint, I will have to ask permission from the rightful owner, Sir Ed and Sir and Architect Jed. So we have a few questions. Actually, I do have my own personal question that I need to ask. Um, after visiting so many farms, and um, Sir Ed, Sir Ray, and Jed, feel free to answer. I've been seeing a lot of bamboo farms getting harvested um, where all the poles are being harvested, meaning they just empty out the entire clump. Um, so again, when I say clump, we're talking about the tree itself. So what happens is a farm owner has a bamboo has a lot of them or they have bamboo trees or bamboo clumps in their farms. And then um, a buyer would come in and say, okay, I'll buy the entire tree for X amount of pesos. Now, um, I, I know that uh, it's common practice everywhere in the Philippines. I just wanted to see what you can say about that and what you would um, advise the, the, our viewers that already do have bamboo clumps in their properties. Well, number one is education yan eh. Uh, when you, kasi, uh, based on experience, pag-ikot ko sa mga probinsya, Pulo Molokis 1 and in Laguna, the kubo makers, no? They will ask the middleman to supply one truck of bamboo poles. One truck. So this middleman will go to the forest or areas where they can see bamboo clumps. So, kontratahin nilang may ari without any knowledge about what they can do about it. Because it's only there. So, sabihin, uh, bilhin ko na ho yan ng 1,000, 1,005. Yeah. So, ganun ang nangyayari. So, they do it, ano, din cutting talaga, din cutting. So, when you do that, the depletion of our natural bamboo forest in many provinces, napakabilis. Napakabilis. Right now, because of this uh, depletion, the cost of bamboo now has gone up. Ito yung nagihingi lang yan eh. Naging 20, naging pesos, naging 100 pesos, 150, now 300. Because no supply. And also, this middleman goes to the mountain na, sa taas na. Kasi wala nang makuha sa baba eh. So, yung transportation cost and everything, ipapasa nila yung doon sa... So ngayon, ang kubo maker ngayon, dati nabibili mo lang ng 15,000, 20,000. No, it's 55,000 na ngayon. 80,000 pa. That's the price of the kubo. If you go to the, in many areas, Pangasinan, Kalamba, in Polumolok. That's my observation. Yeah. On, on our end naman, uh, from the ano, construction side or technical side, uh, pag pino, when we cut, clear cut a whole clump, remember, we use only four to six old bamboo. Kapag mas, mas tumaas na sa six year old, brittle siya, mm. pwede for structural applications. And below four naman, medyo malambot pa yung kawayan. So hindi siya mapapakinabangan for structural. So pwede lang siya for maybe some furniture or some, ano, some baskets and ano. So sa construction, uh, we try to control na four to six lang yung, yung kinukuha namin na poles. And uh, there's a sustainable way of harvesting without even uh, cutting all the poles. Remember, uh, nanganganak yung kada pole, nanganganak siya every year. Pwede sa ating dalawa or pwede tatlo yung, yung anak niya. And uh, trying to preserve it, yung mga below three hanggang year old na nga, huwag mo siyang ikakat. Uh, just cut four to six year old na may maintain yung healthy clump and the next year yung dating year old na nanganak magiging 4 year old na ngayon pwede mo na i-harvest di ba so uh, may paraan may paraan that is where education comes in be yeah. education kasi yung full utilization of the clump ang na sinabi ni Jeff, yung iba brittle na eh pwede mo na gawing charcoal yun or pwede yes. mong gawing pellets yun yun naman bata na 2 years old at meron kang fiber. facility for fiber extraction, pwede yun. So, in other words, sino sa government agencies natin ang dapat ito? Kasi hindi namin kaya lahat eh. Hindi kaya ni <laughs> Coach Ray. <laughs> hindi ko kaya. 
I mean, kukunti lang yung NGO gumagawa nito eh. So, but I think the government agency should stay in. Kasi sila ang may capability, sila ang may resources. Kaya nga, importante, the Department of Agriculture should come in because they have now realized the value, the high uh, value of bamboo. Ano na siya? Ay, value crop na siya eh. They are, well, um, no comment. <laughs> ang hirap ng comment. <laughs> Ang hirap mag-comment sa DNR, no? But you see, but if there is a tipping point among the bamboo advocates, magsama-sama yan, makikinig eh. Makikinig lalo na kay Coach Ray. Matata, Coach Ray. May may say this? Yes, sir, of course. Yes, sir. Yung kasi traditional na purchase ng kawayan, yung buong puno, no? So, ang tendency nung namibili, puputuloy niyan lahat. Kasi nga, para hindi sayang yung binaka. No? Now, we, but we, we covered, when we used to do that, uh, you know, 20 years ago, pag minuto yan, pabalik sa vegetative ng kawayan, maghihintay ka na naman ng apat, limang taon. Ganon. So, Eventually, through experimentation and experience, ang instruction namin ngayon sa mga cutters namin, mag-iwan ka pa ng sampu. Ngayon, kung immature, huwag mo putulin kahit umabot ng 15. No? Ang nangyari is, ang experience namin ngayon, all year round ang kakain, because yung pinan mo ng January, pagdating mo sa sunod na January, nag-mature na naman yung iniwan mo. No? Mm. So, yun yung yung aming now. However, there is pressure because in our case, ang main market namin is the banana industry. Ginagamit ng pantukod ng saging yung yung kawayan. And because of the demand at kulang yung aming cutters, pati yung green tinatanggap nila kahit one year old lang yung old. Eh kami naman, binibenta namin sa kanila para madaling mabuko, benta na naman kami sunod. But, but tama yung sabi ni Ed na a lot of education has to come in. Di ba? Uh-huh. But, but kailangan niya ano eh, yung private sector ang mag-lead dito because your DNR technician does not know this. Uh-huh. They don't know this. They, they don't have plans of their own. Wala silang tanim eh. No? Uh-huh. So wag tayong umasa sa mga technician. Tayo mismo ang mag-aral at magturo. Ganun ang ginagawa namin. No? Okay. So, sorry, because you said something about the government, I guess we have a question for both you and Sir Manda from one of our viewers. Mm-hmm. They said, ano, do we have any information as to why there are no government movement for promoting bamboo as a material, material for building houses? May programs na po, di ba? Mayroon po silang mga announcement, no? During the time of Gina Lopez, they were announcing they had 10 billion pesos for bamboo. Last year, actually, there was an announcement by DNR that in 2020 alone, they will plant 16,000 hectares. Ang problema po, tuwing nagkakaroon ng meeting, hinahanap namin kung saan yun nakatanim. Kasi hinahabon namin sila na magbilangan tayo ng tanim. Eh, wala namin silang masagot. And, you, you know, I think it was published that the COA, Commission on Audit, Audit, has declared that the National Greening Program is, is a calamity. Yes, no? yeah. Hindi po kami yan nagsasabi niya, it's the Commission on Audit. <laughs> <laughs> tama, tama si Coach. So ang, I can... tsaka, ang isa pang ano dyan, dadagdagan ko, kaya hindi pinapansin yung kawayan sa construction because many years ago, ang dami pa nating kahoy eh. Hindi pa, wala pang total lagban eh. Nakaka-import pa eh. So ngayon, nagka-total lagban, lagban, ang mahal-mahal ng mga smuggled na kahoy. So naghahalap sila ng ano ng uh, ng replacement. Nakita nila ito eh, nakita nila ito. But ang problem natin ngayon is parang yung demand biglang nag-surge. Wala yung supply eh. Wala talaga, walang supply. Kahit saan kami magpunta, yung mga nagyayabag na, "Eh, marami kaming kawayan diyan. Puntahan mo." 
Baka isang, isang linggo lang yun pag nag-harvest ka, wala na yun eh. So yung gobyerno ngayon, yung sinasabing DNR na palaging press release na billion-billion, naghahanap nga kami kung nasaan talaga yun. Hindi namin makita eh. Kung totoo yun 2012 o 2015, meron silang billion na nagkaroon ng forest. Dapat nag-harvest na tayo. Eh walang mapakita eh. Eh kinain daw ng kambing, nasunog ng ganito. Yung mga usual eh. So, eh, hindi ko alam kung parang ano ka na eh, yung, ha, yung, wala ka lang magawa sa kanila para maisulong mo yung, ano, yung, yung industry. But now, it's moving forward. Pero small, small scale lang, ibig sabihin, yung dent doon sa policy making, which is Congress, gumagalaw, pero ilan lang yung kakampi mo doon? Si Congressman Sabiliano ng Ilocos. Si, sino pa ba yung isa? Si, well, si Congressman, si Ligarda, Lauren Ligarda daw, no? Tapos, nakaka-interest na si Speaker Velasco. Tapos, pumunta kami, coach, the other, ano, the other week, nag-courtesy call kami kay Speaker, sabi namin, yung sa budget call next year, kung pwede, bigyan po na nyo ng 5 million yung mga each congressional district for bamboo, education, skills training, etc. Napapansin ko, tuwing hihingi lang kami ng maliit, katulad sa National Bamboo Council, hihingi lang kami ng 20 million annual budget. Tinatanggal eh. Hindi pinapansin. Sabi ko, ano kaya, sabihin natin, 1 billion ang kunin natin para mataranta sila. I mean, pag billion-billion kasi, ano eh, lumalaki mga mata nila eh. Eh dito, pag sinabi mo 20 million lang, para naliliitan sila, liit-liit yan. So, ito ang nangyari sa amin for several uh, lobbying sa Senate. Senate pa, pinunta na namin yun, nag-request kami. Ponduhan niyo yung Bamboo Council, please. At walang convergence na nangyayari ngayon. Wala. Kami lang, ka, eh, kami lang itong mga na dito, yung mga nasa Senate. Uh, dinala namin si Dr. Uh, si Palisardo. Si Professor, na doon lahat. Yung mga, ano nga, mga seniors na doon na. They were really praying. Hanggang ngayon, wala eh. I don't know how we can call the attention of this. Parang ano eh, nakafocus sila lahat sa uh, infra eh. Pagdating sa capability building, yun lang, ewan ko, hindi makakuha ng attention eh. Meron, meron, meron kami, we have a little experience in Dabao de Oro. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not wait for the government to, to initiate uh, on bamboo. What we did is uh, there were seven mining companies and two banana companies. Mm -hmm. We entered into a memorandum agreement with our governor. And uh, we agreed that we will promote together the planting of bamboo. So, mm -hmm. yung bawat kumpanya na pumirma ng aming MOA, yun silang annual commitment na mag-distribute mag for free ng bamboo seedlings. No, ngayon, ang ginawa namin, uh, para ma-promote yung planting, ang sabi namin kay Governor at sa dalawang congressman, kung hindi kayo magtatanim, walang gagaya. You know, I, I said, Mayor, kung makita ng mga kapitbahay mo na ikaw nagtatanim, eh Mayor ka, isipin nila baka may pera dito. So, if you go around the province now, lahat ng governor, vice governor, congressman, lahat ng board member na naipagtanim na namin ng kawayan, they became living models for the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, ang isa pang ginawa namin, yung mga eskwelahan na malalaki yung kanilang lupa, pinagtanim namin ng kawayan, yung grade 6 student, one triplet pupil, no graduation pag namatay. <laughs> so, very impressive yung lalaki ng mga giant bamboo na nakapaligid sa eskwela. No? And we are continuing to do this. No? Yung mga tribo, binibigyan namin. Pati yung tribal yun, binibigyan namin si things. Of course, you know, the only detail we can, hindi naman 20,000 civilian na may bibigay mo. In my case, my commitment is 1,000 seedlings per link but I do it with my own hands. Mm -hmm. So, ganun dapat yung approach. Yung rescues, billion-billion, pagkatapos hindi umakita a result. Uh -huh. Tama. But in Dabo de Oro, 
if you go around, makikita nyo yung kaya nakatayo. Oh. So, Sir, ang, guess... uh, ang basic witness kasi ganito, isi-share ko lang, ang basic witness aking, ng ating talking heads, secretaries, kung sino man yung nag, ano, nang kaway, puro ano eh, uh, motherhood statement. Mm. Motherhood statement. Magpapapres sila sila. Pero yung mechanics doon sa baba, hindi nila pinapalo through. Walang follow talaga sa baba. Mag-follow through ka doon sa baba, sasabihin nung nasa assistant secretary, director, ano yun? Hindi sinabi ni ano yun, secretary, ay hindi, wala pang ano, wala pang administrative order. <laughs> wala pa. Pumunta ka sa region, ganun din na yung sasagot sa iyo eh. Ay, wala pa, wala pa yung administrative order. Hindi yun, nasa ano na yun, nasa Facebook na eh. <laughs> Manila hmm. bulletin na eh. Ay, wala hmm. pa nga eh. <laughs> See, that is the problem. Talking heads, hindi pinapalo through yung mechanics doon sa baba. E tayo, sa private sector, it's only little we can do. Ang tagal-tagal na namin dito, Mr. Ato Packing, lumalabas eh. Ito pera eh. And in fact, yung time namin eh, yung time namin, I, I moved out of government service 2010. Hanggang ngayon, bamboo pa rin ang nasa utak ko. <laughs> Hanggang ngayon. <laughs> Rika will Rika sunod. <laughs> But I think there's hope naman. I, I think with our vast natural resources nitong bambu, meron naman unti-unti ilang uh, siguro mga baby steps para yung gobyerno makita nila. Tama si Coach. Eh. I ano talagang private sector. Kung hindi hindi sila gagalaw. I guess that also answers the question about um, if there are any active government projects that would support would be bamboo farmers. I know that there are, you know, there are like the, the DPP grants. There are these government programs that support bamboo farmers. But it seems like, parang yung sabi mga Sir Ed, ganito kakapal yung kailangan mo paan or pilang. It's uh, very discouraging. So I guess we'll just move on from topic um go on a lighter topic so okay um, <laughs> nagtanong kung meron ba daw uh, giant or dendro calamus asper uh, farms in Luzon or Manila area ay wala akong alam <laughs> uh, farm wala. farm wala but wala. merong but the ano if you want live sample in Luzon ni Resis Carolina sa Ambu Garden in Antipolo or oh, in Antipolo oh. Itself. There are large clumps there, rivaling Bonon, rivaling Indonesia in the size. Oh. Yung sabihin natin large-scale farm, wala. Demo yeah. farm lang yun sa Carolina. Yes. Demo farm. Nasa Facebook. Nasa Facebook kami. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's a really good question. Oh. Do you think the Philippines will be able to compete side-by-side side with countries like Vietnam, China, Bali, who produce large amounts of bamboos in the future, and how would we actually get there? Uh, ako, sir. Sagot ko. Sagot ko. Uh, uh, okay. We need first to do it in-house, yung demand muna natin within our, ano, within our own, before we even do the export. Uh, market mo, for example, in sa construction namin, I'm I, I'm talking siguro 10 poles per square meter. So imagine uh, a size ng isang ano isang condo around 50 ano 50 square meter condo or so meron kang 50 square meter na house or even 100 square meter na house you multiplied by 10 ano 100 square meter times 10 pole 10 ano 10 poles that's easily 1000 1000 poles ang kailangan ko to, in order to build a small 100 square meter house. And remember Uh, you're only going for six poles per clump if you're sustainably harvesting. So, ang requirement ko for an, a 100 square meter na bahay amounting um, to 1,000 poles is around uh, 1.5 hectare worth of, ano, of uh, bamboo clumps. So, dun pa lang, ubus na yung demand natin if we're, if we're going sa construction pa lang. Yeah, yun. So, Uh, going for you know, for effort and that unless it's really large scale plantation which I discourage. <laughs> Gusto natin it's a uh, diverse 60% bamboo, 80% bamboo designed designed properly. Hindi pwedeng monoculture. 
Yeah, years ago we are importing from Indonesia bamboo poles. We are importing. Yeah. Don't dinadaan sa Davao. <laughs> Salamat <laughs> namin. Don't dinadaan sa Davao. Mm. So yung local natin, sabi nga ni Jed, yung local, we cannot compete with China and Vietnam now. We cannot. Yung level lang kanilang development and support ng government, we cannot. We cannot match that. Pero sa akin, ang pwede is kung sa livelihood lang, ang tinatawag na circular economy, iyang construction talaga. Yan. Ang laki ng demand yan. Yung NHA, umukay na sila eh na ang kawayan pwedeng gamitin sa construction. The problem is the supply. Wala. Yeah. Supply a problem eh. So we must propagate. Again. Yes. 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 Um, we have another question for Jed. For a beginning, for a beginner, beginner farmer or architect, what species would you recommend in okay. terms of, I guess, propagation? Okay. Uh, one, in order to design yung, yung, you design your farm, your bamboo farm. Number one, ano yung target mo to construct? So there are five species that I'll be recommending. So yung first three species, uh, tinik, giant bamboo, and bayog is for structural. Then yung ornamental parts of the ano parts of the house that can be ano ornamented with ano buho, black bamboo, uh, killing, uh, and ano tapos for landscape naman you can do yung mga small diameter poles, anos, a Thai bamboo, even pole bamboo for landscape. So again, uh, no monoculture, mix it up depending on you, targeted and designed kung anong ano anong type of pole yung gusto mo i-produce for your for your forest or for your bamboo forest and alam mo kung ano yung market mo if it's for construction if it's for basket if, if it's for weaving if it's for charcoal support targeted ka agad if you're beginning farmer okay okay there's also a lot of questions about where they can buy uh, planting material for bamboo um, in several areas like Davao, Pangasinan, Tarlac um, I guess we can refer them to Bamboo Network PH. PH. That's where most people. Um, that's where most people are posting. And like Sir Ed Naman said, you can make your own seedlings or uh, yeah. planting material. Um, there, I, I read a lot of comments. You know, um, people say that apparently YouTube is a great education source for <laughs> information on how to do this. So. Um, there is uh, yung, yung, the ones that you enumerated. Are those the same types that can be used uh, um, uh, instead of uh, wood or softwood? Yeah, particularly the bambusa species. These are the thick-walled species. Uh, that's ano, uh, for biomass and for timber. Bambusa is uh, is first. So second will be giant bamboo due to sheer uh, diameter and sheer na nagagawa niya. Ayan. But uh, speed, so, the, uh, no. so it's first is bambusa, second is dendrocalamo. Okay. And for our bamboo farm, our veteran bamboo farmers, uh, there's a question about uh, in what kind of soil does the these the bamboo grow? Or is there a type of soil that bamboo prefers? Yeah, si coach, si coach, pwede. Yeah, si coach, yeah. Hey, yung, yung pong kawayan, damo po yan. Uh, so ako, ang sinasabi ko, kung saan tumutubo ang damo, tumutubo ang kawayan. Tama. Na of course, kahit na yung damo, depende kung mo itanim, medyo payat o medyo malago. So, I had one experience in 1992, Nagtanim kami ng bambu in Iligan City sa mined out area na limestone. So when I was asked by president of the company, Will Bambu, I said, bring me to the area. Nung nakita kong tumutuluan kami, sabi ko pwede. But because it was limestone, ang ginawa namin, ang hinukay namin butas, one, one cubic meter, nagdala kami ng magandang soil, parang booster. Now, yung bambu, pagdating ng pangatlong taon, uh, 
yung kanyang leaf fall, yung ilalaglag niyang dahon during the dry season, is organic matter to fertilize it. Correct. It will yes. its own soil and it will produce its own fertilizer. Kailangan lang po tiyaga. Siyempre, doon sa mga mas soil, mas matay. Mm. Pero you, you have to have some kind of commitment. Yung planting bamboo and harvesting bamboo is not something you can do overnight. Yeah. Maghihintay ka talaga. Yes. <laughs> Maghihintay ka talaga. Nag-intay ako ng 35. Malapit ako mag-retire. <laughs> All right. You know what? We have like hundreds more questions, but we have room for one more. Um, the last one is, I guess, the three of you, sir. Um, and this person said, what can we do in our own little way to make the cause, uh, propagation cause, a lot spread so maybe this is a message to everybody um, that wants to help promote the cause and help promote the bamboo industry so, so I can say LG if you are involved in your community especially in provinces mas organize yung kanilang mga co-ops eh, yung mga communities especially those who were affected by adding si itong huli yung huli lalo na dun sa north Importante yan. Uh, kung sila nag-isip ng kung ano man, talaga nila ito potential erosion, magkaroon. Tingnan ninyo yung kawayan kung as a, a material for replanting or uh, reforestation. Ay, hindi naman tayo nagmamonoculture, no? monoculture. But yung unang damo na ilalagay, like yung kawayan is damo eh. Yun ang mag-rehabilitate kasi ng sila. So, eh. Then, magdagdag ka ng kung anong protris, kung anong dipterocarp, pag pwede po. Uh, tatandaan natin, huwag kayo tatanim ka agad sa tuktok ng bundok at hindi mabubuhay. Because of wind factor, etc. Kami, kailangan ilagay mo nyo doon sa taas yung mga medyo nitrogen fixing. Ano ba yung nitrogen fixing? Mga kalyandra, for example. Ano? Madali-dali yan. Sarab yan eh. Kakawate. Kakawate. Yan ang mundo doon sa taas. Para pag ulan niya, yung nitrogen niya, may bababa niya doon sa kawayanan. Yun ang technique po dyan. Kayo magtatanim doon sa taas ka agad. Sa mga crevices muna. Kasi yun ang pinupuntahan po ng tubig eh. Ganun. So, marami pong, ano, marami pong reference material. Yung na, kung nakuha nyo yung aking slide kanina, kung na-screenshot nyo, malaking tulong po yun. Uh, I-google lang ninyo, YouTube nyo, o yung mga reference materials yeah. uh, sa Picard, sa DNR, e ecosystem, madami po. Kaya lang yung sa Picard at saka po sa ecosystem, yung mga libro nila, parang naka Fort Knox, hindi makalabas. <laughs> And, yeah. uh, ako naman, on my end, sharing yung pinaka-Bible ko on, ano, on uh, bamboo forestry. <clears throat> So this one is Towards Resilient Bamboo Forestry by Arif Radik and Ben Brown around the uh, 20 years na ano mm -hmm. na experience uh, doing bamboo. So I always go to here para makita um, different ano uh, so uh, nandito na siya lahat soil if you're you're asking soil meron nandito yung ano nandito yung uh, data on soil if you're asking for when when yung gusto nating harvest nandito rin Uh, setting up a a you know a co-op uh, meron din sila dito yeah. mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's a good uh, reference for ano uh, for doing the ano uh, even the tabulations and checklist na ilagay na nila dito so for me um, it, this is a good resource in order to start uh, as baby step so propagate mm -hmm. ka read okay. this ano uh, read this book tapos of course go to ano go to test the ano test the accredited uh, bamboo production and propagation so first one in the union uh, join bamboo boot camp <laughs> and also go to bamboo network ph ask the right questions in bamboo network ph uh, may sasagot at may sasagot po diyan uh, if you want seedlings may sasagot po diyan if you want uh, tre uh, treatment may sasagot po diyan um, uh, very millennial uh, facebook and social media is be is uh, able to cater to this okay okay uh, ako naman simple lang yung aking parting message there's enough information on bamboo on social media wala kang gustong malaman na hindi masasagot dami-dami nga expert 
<laughs> ang kulang, ang kulang, yung personal na desisyon na bukas, itatanim mo na. <laughs> Yun lang ang simpleng message ko. Tawa, tawa. Take it down from, from, from the PowerPoint. Bring it to the soil. Yun lang. Oh, and, kami naman. Thank you so much, guys. Thank oh. you so much. Sige, thank you, thank you uh, for for this opportunity. So again, for our viewers that are asking about the PowerPoint, um, get checked. Am I losing internet? Yeah, yeah. You're good. You're good, Rika. I'm good? Okay. So, again, um, for our viewers that are asking about a copy of my we'll get back to you on the fan page. Um, please like our Bamboo Bootcamp um, fan page to get more details. We do have a bootcamp scheduled in Bukidnon this uh, April and another one in June in Davao. Hopefully, August will be in Luzon uh, for our Luzon followers. Um, there are people that are asking about Visayas, um, maybe 2022, we don't know yet. But we're also hoping to get Sir Ed Manda to come to Davao um, within yeah. this year. Si coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to have a reunion. We're going to do this live yes, yes. Uh, here in Davao. So hopefully we can do that. So thanks again, Sir Chad, Sir Ed, Sir Ray, for giving us your time uh, we appreciate your info and your knowledge and um for sharing with us a lot of different things that we don't read on social media obviously um hopefully we can do this again in part two um thank you for everyone that's here with us we look forward to hearing from you guys mm -hmm. have a good one see ya okay. see ya thank you thank you bye -bye. okay bye-bye